and welcome to our meeting for uh, this morning on the 18th of July. Uh, another one of my series in, uh, from the LICC, London Institute of Contemporary Christianity. Christ I can't even say it, Christianity. And uh, this week we're looking at whatever we do. Some, wel uh, some welcome and uh, some notices just for, to for, for this week. Um, there's no Bible fellowship this week or the week after. Our next Bible fellowship will be the 5th of August. And that will be a hybrid. Um, we're intending to meet at the hall for those who want to, but also uh, you are welcome to join in on Zoom as well. So that's the 5th of August for our next Bible Fellowship, And that day is significant as well because the Friendship Club and the Lunch Club are starting on that day. So a date for your diary, 5th of August. Please note that Friendship Club is now starting in the mornings, 10.30 uh, is when we're going to start um, uh, the Friendship Club. Um, um, so please, um, if you know of somebody who would love to come along, who would like to come along to that, please let them know. 10.30 on the 5th of August and then following that will be the lunch at 12. We have written to people that are on our list, but if anybody else wants to come, then we'd love to see them as well. And don't forget, um, if, you're, uh, if you're in the area, that uh, the Priory are having services on a Wednesday morning at 10.30, the Priory at Queensway, 10.30 on a Wednesday. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Well, you haven't um, you're not able at the moment to, um, to, to gather and or enter the gates of our hall for the time being. We'll see what happens in the future. I will enter his courts with praise, the next line says. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. We're going to start our worship on with that song uh, this morning. 337 in our songbook. Rejoice because he has made me glad. I hope you feel glad this morning and you feel joyful in, in where you are today. So shall we pray? Father God, we do thank you that we are able to worship with you in this way today. We have metaphorically, Lord, entered your gates and we have thanksgiving in our hearts because we can worship and praise you. So Lord, be with us in this next time of worship and uh, be with those who are uh, joining with us online uh, as, uh, as they, uh, as they in uh, include and they, as they join with us there. We just pray that um, your Holy Spirit will again minister to us. We will be aware of his presence with us this morning. So give us a good time of worship and praise just now, Lord, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> So our service, our meeting today is entitled, Whatever We Do. We've looked at uh, other, other in the last couple of weeks, uh, whatever, wherever we are, and different, different subjects as well. Now you might say, well, we've had three weeks of these, of these um, services already, or this series, 
And they seem to be saying the same thing. Well, they, they are in so many ways, but there are subtle differences. And I was told once that uh, at a course that we have to do things or read things 12 times before it really goes into our uh, it goes into our minds. It makes them, we do things apparently for humans, it's 12 times to make them a, like a habit. So perhaps I should repeat all my sermons 12 times uh, on a 12 week cycle and we'll see. I don't know what people would make of that. I was also told by our dog Prohavius that we had for our dog um, some while back that d dogs have to do things 300 times plus to make them really sink in. I don't know what that tells you uh, about dogs and us, but there we are. <clears throat> so whatever we do, the work of our hands, however small and insignificant it may seem to us, it all matters to God. It's part of our worship and how we serve others and how we bear witness to God. There can be kingdom significance in our daily tasks and activities, however great or small those things and those activities are. There's a great song in our songbook. Um, uh, it, we are at the hands of Christ. We are the hands of Christ. He uses each day to show his love to everyone to ev in every kind of Way. And the, the verses of that particular song, 687 in our song, what goes through and we talk, it says, we are the feet of Christ, we are the eyes, we are the lips, we are the friends of Christ. We are the hands of Christ in everything that we do. We're just going to watch a film clip now. And in this film, uh, which is formed like an unspoken prayer, really, we see four people going about their daily tasks. And they remind us that so often it is through what we do that God gets uh, done what he wants done in the world. Notice how the characters recognize the value of their tasks in God's economy while, seek, while seeking God's wisdom on how to serve him well. So watch this film just now. <laughs> Father, help me do good today. I want to shape this place to your design. Help me see the value my work has to you. May I model your kindness and patience. So that you are recognised. Yeah, <laughs> May they know Jesus through my presence. May they see your light as I share mine. Give me your joy and self-control. So that your warmth touches those I meet. Help me to be generous. Quick to put others first. Sharing clearly your love and grace. Give me words to speak about you. And courage to stand for justice and truth. Whatever the day brings. In my humanity, weakness, breakthrough. Let my life overflow with you. So whatever we do in Jesus' name, God will use. And I'll speak more about that later on in my thoughts. We're going to listen to Birmingham Songsters now. And they're going to bring us uh, a song which is linked to, to our meeting and our theme. And it's, this one's entitled, Wherever You Are. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Birmingham Songsters. Sue Farrow is now going to bring us our prayers for this morning. Shall we pray together? Lord, thank you that we can come before you at this special time, whether meeting together or using technology in our homes to worship and praise you. We thank you for your goodness to each of us. We thank you for keeping us safe as the pandemic continues. For all members of our core family, be especially close as we are given the freedom to make our own choices on how we come out of restrictions. May we act wisely and responsibly. Lord, this morning, we bring our prayers to you, especially for Evelyn and the family, as she mourns the loss of Ken. May she know he is now in your safekeeping and free from pain. And for all our friends who have found the time to be so difficult, Lord, be with them. We pray for Andrew as he leads our core. And we pray especially for the new lieutenants commissioned last weekend. Be with them, Lord, guiding, directing them in the future journey with you. And as schools break up for the summer, be with our young people. We covet them for you, Lord. Lord, in your name, we ask all these things. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Let's join together in the uh, uh, family prayer of the church, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Song 10 in our songbook. Uh, we're going gonna to use now. And it... That particular song says, Do you sometimes feel that no one truly loves you? No one understands. Someone cares. Someone knows your deepest need, your burden shares. God himself will hear the whisper of your prayers. The second line, uh, verse talks about God not being distant. He's there with us in everything that we do. Whatever we do, wherever we Ah. Uh.
Sue is now going to bring us our Bible reading uh, for today, which is from Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. The reading this morning is taken from Colossians chapter 3 and verses 15 to 17 and 23 and 24. And this morning I'm reading from the Message Translation. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the master, Jesus thanking God the Father every step of the way. Work from the heart for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. Thank you again, Sue, for helping us with our prayers and Bible reading this morning. Another song, which uh, is a band arrangement, we're going to listen to Just now, sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. Give thanks to God in everything. And we've heard that in our Bible reading this morning about giving thanks to God. Give thanks every day for everything in the name of Jesus Christ. So whatever we do, to look around and think about the people that um, you know, uh, people perhaps in in our fellowship that you know, you would know better than perhaps I, although I hope I have now, after a year in Ipswich, that I have a fairly good idea of what each of our fellowship members um, do or did or perhaps are interested. Perhaps they're teachers, they're teaching their service, care for others, um, administration, building, hospital work, and the list goes on. And I think you can think of, of the people that you know. It was some time ago that I worked in building and estate agency pre, um, before becoming an officer. And I had some sense that I could, do, could, could be more uh, use or I could be as, as effective in spreading the gospel then, in my secular work, as I am now. I didn't make any secret of my faith, even when I was working, wherever I was working, the council or at the the estate agency. And many in the office respected uh, that I did, that I didn't 
um, um, sort of uh, hide my faith. Although many of them, and I count them as friends today still, did not see the need for God in their lives. We think about our passage this morning, Colossians, and it was written by Paul out of his concern for the believers he was writing to. Paul stresses that Jesus is supreme in all things. Supreme in all things. Paul encourages uh, or encouraged Christians in practical living, and that was part of his motivation for this letter. I suppose Paul may have used our phrase frontline we've been using for the last few weeks. And he was, but he was encouraging them where they were. Paul's letter to the church at Colossae describes the kind of community God was calling them to be. And as we read it, the kind of community that God is calling us to be and to be where, where he wants us to be. But he makes clear that we shouldn't be inward focused. Our daily lives as Christian believers are to be marked by love, kindness, uh, compassion in places of work, in our places of activity, and in our relationships with each other and other people. When you think about the social conditions present at the time of the passage that Paul wrote, or the letter that Paul wrote, aren't the same social conditions that most of us face today. However, the principles are as applicable uh, now as much as then. Commitment to Jesus as Lord is to be worked out in daily life. Commitment to Jesus is to be worked out in relationship with others. And, bound, isn't it? and it's bound up in our service to Jesus himself. <clears throat> Paul mentions the peace of Christ in, in, his, in this passage. Paul says we're called to show the peace uh, of Christ, the peace of him. Uh, and he also says, uh, be thankful. And I hope we are thankful for all that uh, God provides and gives us each and every day. Tom Wright, um, you might know him as a, as a Christian. He used to be a bishop of Durham some time ago. Not the famous one, but he, was, he followed him. He asked this question in one of the books that I've got at home, and he said, have you ever tried to let Christ's peace, Christ's name, to be a re the reality around which is permanent in your life? And we would say, well, of course, of course, that's, we do. That's what we would say. Think of this week with all the stuff going on after the England game surely emphasizes that we should be showing God's peace in everything. Unfortunately, many people recently have not experienced peace, and we have to be part of the solution to that and show it in our everyday lives, whatever, wherever we are or whatever we do. <clears throat> but think about it. Doing what Paul urges here in this passage is not easy. Tom Wright says that it takes serious prayer and real effort. So why does God make it so difficult, we might ask. But I think the other week we heard that going through trials uh, and hard work sharpens our faith, which is, worth, uh, which is more worth than gold, from another passage from our series. If we take effort to live Christ's peace, or show others we do, this Christian behaviors, behavior makes us more human. This is what Tom says. Tom Wright says, how does that work? Uh, how does that work, we may ask? Well, Tom says, Tom Wright says, unchristian behavior may look okay, may look inviting to, to start with, may seem fun initially, but it destroys us sooner or later. So whatever we do, Paul says, do it Christian-like. I think that's what he's trying to say. Whatever we do, do it as Christians, showing Christ in our life. Whatever you do, whatever we do, 
whether it is in our gathered worship or in our scattered everyday lives, it all matters. There are so many things to be thankful for today, aren't there? And we are called to show our thankfulness. The other week we had National Thank You Day. And I wonder who you said thank you to. We are taught, aren't we, from very young, from very young age, to say thank you. Many times the first, uh, first word we learn or we teach our children, grandchildren, is tar. It's easy to say when you give them uh, something and you say tar, don't we? Most of the people hearing the letter that Paul wrote to them at church in Colossae, many of them hearing it being read out would have been slaves. They would have been the household servants. And in many ways, they kept the economy of the Roman Empire going. But they had very little control over their lives. It would have been very tempting for them to think that their daily tasks were insignificant. But Paul is encouraging them. And Paul's encouragement uh, to them offered a new way of seeing that these daily tasks mattered. Some Christians still feel that their tasks may be important. But that ultimately they don't really matter to God. They live with a sense of the sacred, secular divide. This verse destroys that difference. The passage destroys that. Paul doesn't have any, any, Paul will not have none of that, basically. The secular, uh, sacred divide. I don't think, I mean, it's, it's all one, isn't it? We're Christians wherever we are. So whatever we do, do it with all our heart, what Paul says. So how do we help people who are looked down on, who are thought to be insignificant? Of course, that's something that Salvation Army is well known for doing. Paul helps his readers, us, see that we are actually working for the Lord in everything. It is part of our worship. We are serving the Lord. And I said that last week about Brother Lawrence doing the dishes. So what sort of actions and words will make this true in our lives? In the life of our neighbourhood, our workplaces, our school or our club. Let's listen to a song now, 467, in our song. It's an arrangement by Gaz Rose. If human hearts are often tender and human minds can pity know, if human love is touched with splendor and human hands compassion show, then how much more shall God our Father in love forgive? Verse 2 says, If sometimes we can live for others and sometimes give where gifts are spurned, if sometimes treat our foes as brothers, and love where love is not returned. In everything we do, we have to love each other and everyone. So let's listen and just reflect on this, this passage this morning in this lovely arrangement of this song.
So whatever we do, do it all in the name of Jesus. When we do something as Christians, we are acting as Jesus' ambassadors, as his representatives. Think about it. When we parenting, when we parent our children, when we're being a friend to someone, when we're pricing a job or running a business, we see different people doing everyday stuff, but doing it as Christian believers, doing it in Jesus' name. And we are each called to be Christ's ambassadors, to represent him in all we do and say. So our challenge for today is what does it mean to do our daily tasks in Jesus' name? What does that look like for us? Made me think of Matthew 25. Matthew 25, starting at 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was ill, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. That was Jesus quoting the king from his story at Matthew 25. But he was talking about himself. At the start of this meeting, I said this. We are the hands of Christ. Whatever we do, the work of our hands, however small and insignificant it may seem, matters to God. It's part of our worship and how we serve others and bear witness to God. God. We are the hands of Christ. Just reflect on that and pray as we listen to this version of song 577. And it's, it uses the chorus from 577, channels only, blessed Saviour. It does use other songs as well within this particular arrangement. It's a lovely one. But just pray and reflect on this coming week, whatever you're going to be doing. Do it in the name of Jesus.
hands of Christ. Channels only, blessed master. That's what we are. We're channels for, the, for God in everything, whatever we do. 389, we're going to finish with. Uh, and I'm going to just say a benediction before we join in with rejoice, rejoice. Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, his breath is in us. Arise, a mighty army, we arise. God in, is at work in us, his purpose to perform, the second verse says. And then the third one is a real promise, and it's, it's a comfort. It says, though we are weak, his grace is everything we need. Let's pray for that grace this week in whatever we do. We're going to listen and sing along with this, following this benediction. Lord, as we scatter to our front lines, we thank you for the many opportunities to do, the good, to do good in the world. Whatever the tasks of our week, wherever we are, we pray that you will work through them and they will bear fruit for your kingdom. May we do all things attentive to your presence and with a heart set on working at them for you, first and foremost. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. May God bless you. He lifts, he lifts his breath and sings you.